Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to take some time to check out a new app from NVIDIA called uh, the NVIDIA app. So it's currently in beta or beta and it will replace the GeForce Experience app and the uh, aging NVIDIA control panel. But the main thing today I wanted to look at is a feature that comes within it and that is AI enhanced game visuals, specifically a feature called RTX Dynamic Vibrance. You enable it in the same way that you would enable the NVIDIA filters that we've had for years now. And I don't know about the rest of you, but it can be a little bit of a faff to layer up and configure a load of NVIDIA filters to get something that looks just right. So the fact that this is AI based made me want to check out to see if we can have kind of like a set it and forget it approach to game filters. Also, there's the element as well with competitive titles. I'm curious to see if maybe it can give us an edge perhaps making it easier to, I don't know, spot an enemy hiding in a bush or, or whatever. So we're going to test it in a few games with it on, with it off, do some comparisons, and let's see if it's worth doing. Alrighty, so we're loaded up into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and at the moment we're just in uh, in like a pre-lobby, and the filters are off, so this is just standard normal uh, visuals at the moment. If we press Alt and Z, you see we get uh, an overlay, and we've got our game filters down here, so let's click into that. I've got a profile set up here, profile number one, with the uh, filters, the RTX Dynamic Vibrance enabled. So if I just quickly flick it on, you can see the difference it makes. Everything is much, much brighter. So that's on and off, on and off. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, with it on, I think it does look kind of cool, but I think it's maybe a little bit too much. So we can open up the uh, little slider bar here and you see you've got these slider bars you can adjust the intensity now a weird thing with the app is that sometimes they're grayed out look at the moment i cannot move these at all and other times they aren't grayed out and i don't really know what the uh, rhyme or reason is as to why they gray out or not gray out i had it a few moments ago where i could change them and now i can't maybe it's early days in the software but i did find that kind of shuffling around to different parts of the game maybe if we start a match that might uh change things for us yeah, there we go. Now, for whatever reason, we can adjust the, the intensity. For me, I kind of think somewhere around 30 is about the sweet spot for me. I kind of feel the default where it lands on 50, a little bit too much. So we're going to jump into shipment. We'll uh, do a little round. You can see how amazing I am at Call of Duty, for one thing. And uh, second of all, we can do some on-off comparisons. So let's jump in. All right, so at the moment, I've got the filters off. And I'm going to quickly switch them on while trying not to get shot. And hopefully you can see the difference. So that's on and off. On and off. So you can see, just gives it a little bit more pop. Hopefully, making it easier for us to spot people. Right, watch and learn, kids. This is how you play Call of Duty. So I'm curious to see whether enemies are a little bit easier to spot. If there are any enemies, where are they all gone? Oh, there's one. Yeah, let's go. So that's quite a hard enemy to spot there because they were crouched down on the floor. Let's uh, switch it back to off. Now, keep in mind that... Oh, damn it. <laughs> keep in mind... <laughs> that this is me looking at my monitor. So I'm looking at this with my own eyes and I'm making my own judgment call based on how my monitor looks to me. Damn it, that was bad, wasn't it? So by the time this gets recorded, uploaded to YouTube, compressed, and you know YouTube does whatever it does to the video, and then you watch it on your screen, it's gonna look very, very different to what I'm seeing right here, right now. So just keep that in mind. Right, let's dive in here and we'll put the filter back on again and we'll do some running around oh didn't sound a chance there did i i mean you could say maybe it doesn't look quite as realistic but frankly we're playing call of duty so i think realism is uh realism is a distant memory anyway but honestly if it allows us to spot an enemy in a bush that we wouldn't otherwise have spotted that's got to be a good thing 
Right, so we're back in the lobby. Um, obviously, don't read too much into that performance you just saw. Um, I am much better, I promise. I promise. Um, but I think I'm probably going to run with this because I think with a game like Call of Duty, especially in the kind of Battle Royale modes, visibility is everything. And one of my main complaints sometimes is that you, you, know, you just get shot from somewhere and it's like, I just couldn't see the other person. So anything that gives us a a 1% more of a chance of seeing an enemy, I'm I'm going to take it. I think the default settings are far too strong out of the box, like I said, with the 50%, but crank it back to mid-20s, 30s, maybe even layer up a couple of your own filters on top as well, maybe a contrast, maybe something else if you're, if you're into that, to get it to how you like it to look on your monitor. Then, uh, yeah, go for that. But I, I, I do think this is uh, kind of worth it. In my case, at least, your mileage may vary depending on your display and on your kind of uh, own preferences. Again, this is all subjective. The purpose of this video is, is not for me to sit here and say, you must definitely use the NVIDIA filters. It's like, let's just see if it works. It's working for me right now, but for you, it might be different. So make your own mind up. Link in the description to the NVIDIA app and have a play. All right, so one other game I wanted to try out was Cyberpunk, uh, specifically at nighttime, and because of course, I mean, look at look at the uh, visuals that we've got going on here. This is with all the filters off, so this is just the kind of stock settings, but it's very uh, lots of bright lights, lots of kind of like neon kind of lighting going around, and uh, I figured this would be quite a good one to test at nighttime. I'm a little bit apprehensive because a I've tried this in Microsoft Flight Simulator on my Flight Sim channel. Um, if you are a flight simmer, feel free to go over and sub over there if that's your thing. If not, no offence taken. I realise it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I did find in the flight sim at least at night time it didn't look so great. What with all the runway lights and things as you were coming in on final approach, it looked a bit weird. So. I figured this would be a pretty good one to test as well, given that it's a nighttime game. And I'm also curious to see if maybe there's like variances based on like a game by game basis, because I'm not entirely sure how it works under the hood, because of course it's done on AI and it's all trained on training data. So maybe the training data for Cyberpunk might be different to the sim. I don't know. Let's find out. So this is with it off. Let's uh, get ourselves a nice view of some stuff. This looks pretty good. So this is with it off. And we're just going to dive into the filter. And we're going to turn it on. Whoa, that's quite bright. So what I've done is I've enabled it at 30%, just like we did on Call of Duty. This is um, independent game by game. So when I first booted Cyberpunk, I thought, okay, I'll just enable it because it was enabled on Call of Duty. And actually, there was nothing there. I had to enable it for Cyberpunk. So you can have different settings, it would seem, on a game by game basis, which is nice. So that being the case, let's uh, have a little wander around. So this is with it on. Again, everything looks very, very uh, vibrant. But it's one of those things whether perhaps it goes a little bit too far. Possible that it might be looking at it here. I'm just not entirely convinced by this. I feel like kind of part of Cyberpunk's charm is that kind of dark grittiness that comes with the game. Um, although that being said, these signs do look pretty cool. Though I, I can't actually make out what that sign is. I don't know whether if we turn it off we will be able to. Uh, no, you can't really make out what that sign is anyway with it off. It just seems to be an overblown kind of bright sign. Let's look at these signs here. This is probably a, quite a good place to test it. So we can currently we can basically make out what all of these signs are. Um, we've got traffic lights there. We've got brake lights on the cars. Let's quickly turn it back on. Okay, so the, yeah, legibility is still fine. I think... It's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say. I think at night time, I think in, 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 like in a daytime sort of game, like we were in that level in Call of Duty, I think definitely. For me, definitely. No questions asked. I think, I think it was an improvement. So that's with it off. That's with it on. Mm. Not sure. Not sure in the dark. I'm 50-50. On my monitor, on this setup, I'm 50-50. On a game like Cyberpunk kind of that dark gloominess kind of gives it a bit more atmosphere maybe I don't know I can't decide I can't decide certainly in flight sim it was a definite no for me at night time um, I'll probably enable it when I'm flying in the daytime but at night time it's going off immediately cyberpunk 50-50 50-50 but let me know what you think again this is this is me looking at it on my monitor if you're watching this on a phone or, or a different TV it's going to look different to your eyes right now as to what I'm seeing. So it's, it's a bit of a funny video to make in that sense. 
but I think the lesson that I found so far, what with flight sim, what with Call of Duty, what with this, time of day is going to make a difference. And also kind of just the nature of the game is going to make a difference. So it may be that on some games you enable it and on some, some games you don't. And that's fine. Like you don't have to have it on all the time everywhere. And you can have a different setting for Cyberpunk. Maybe take the intensity down to say 10% versus Call of Duty where you have it maybe at 30 or 40. So you do have options. But I think it's a very interesting technology and probably one that's only going to improve over time. Um, I realised by default this video may get some flack just because I've mentioned the word AI and that seems to trigger some people. Especially gamers at the moment because I think there's a, a kind of a, a general feeling that Nvidia don't care about gamers anymore because all they care about is AI because that's what's making them all the money. And yes, while that is true, we do actually stand to benefit from AI. I mean, just, just think about it. DLSS super sampling wouldn't be a thing without AI. Frame generation wouldn't be a thing without AI. This wouldn't be a thing without AI. And video broadcast where it cleans up your mic feed wouldn't be a thing without AI. So I think it's wrong to dismiss AI as, as a load of rubbish and a distraction for Nvidia and you know gamers aren't cared about anymore. We are getting definitely things filtered down. You know the spoils of uh, oh dear I shouldn't be over here should I? <laughs> Sorry officer. Um, yeah, there's definitely uh, the spoils of NVIDIA's AI pursuits definitely are filtering down to us. And I understand it might be frustrating sometimes to feel like they don't care about us because all they want to do is make loads of money off their AI chips. But on the other hand, we wouldn't get cool features like this. So it's a, it's a tricky, tricky trade-off. But let me know what you think in the comments. I would be keen to know if you've tried this um, or if you haven't yet. Try it and let me know. Try it in some different games maybe I haven't tried. Be really cool to hear from you. Um, but I do, I do think definitely the more atmospheric games may be at this time. Leave it off. So yeah, 50-50 on darker games, atmospheric, moody games. But competitive shooters, you know, like PUBG, like Call of Duty, like Apex Legends, and you know, in the daytime when you're flying around on flight sim. It really does look nice, especially if you've got some like bright sun and you've got a nice, nice reflection on your wing. It's very, very cool. I'll leave a link to the flight sim video because I've done a similar video for this, just focused on the flight sim element on my flight sim channel. So be sure to uh, go over there and check that out if you want to see what that's all about. And I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you all very much indeed for watching. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to get to 1,000 subs and we're really, really close. Uh, I think we're about like 910 at the time of recording. And... Uh, yeah, we need to get to 1,000 subs, then we can uh, get the channel monetized, which will be awesome. But until next time, thank you all very much for watching. Take the very best care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.